Well, my name's Christopher Monckton, Lord Monckton of Brenchley. You're in the presence of greatness, uh, but in my case only inherited. I have no seat or vote in the House, but I am a member of it. And I was educated at Harrow and at Cambridge, where I studied classical architecture, and it was there that I first began to learn the mathematics, which has become something of a hobby with me for the rest of my life. I've edited various newspapers. I have then run a consultancy business for many years with uh, comfortable success, uh, giving technical advice to corporations and governments on matters including climate change. And I'm on a tour of the Australian continent at the moment, telling people that they don't need to worry about global warming because if it happens at all it won't happen too fast and even if it were to happen at the rate that they say it would then it would still be at least ten times cheaper to let that happen and pay the cost of adapting to it than it would to try to prevent it happening in the first place. That's my central message. My father was a very honourable man and he in turn was the son of a very honourable man. My grandfather resigned from the cabinet uh, two weeks before the Suez invasion and he was Minister of Defence at the time but he said I can't carry on with this because this invasion is not only wrong in principle it's certainly unworkable in practice because he was proved right when everybody else in the cabinet was wrong and there's nothing more fatal to it career than that, so he was booted upstairs to the House of Lords. Uh, my father inherited from him, he too was an exceptionally honourable man. And so I learnt from them uh, that one should try to be an honourable man oneself. I don't think I'm as good at it as they were, but I do my best. Yes, it's been a series of accidents that has led me to what I do today. Uh, as to whether anybody has prompted me or helped me on the way, I was brought into the climate story by uh, Eddie Miller, who is the CEO of a boutique finance house in London. And he rang up one day out of the blue and said, look, could you have a look at this for us? He knew that I had previously worked for Margaret Thatcher now she of course was both a scientist and a politician and she was fascinating to work for, I spent four years working for her because she was so rigorous in her approach to policy questions. She wanted a proper appraisal of them done and at that time I was saying to her, this was 25 years ago, I was saying to her it looks as though global warming might be a problem, the scientists think that it is, perhaps we should find out. My successor George Guise then got her to make a speech getting rather overexcited saying that we were going to see one Celsius of warming per decade which of course hasn't happened and isn't at all likely to. I would not have let her say anything quite as indiscreet as that but she was certainly a very strong influence on me because she too was honourable and straight and also approached political questions scientifically and not from the point of view of prejudice and that I think is particularly important in the global war.